Nice. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode at Breast Premier. Today, we are having a wonderful guest. It is Modeta. Finally, to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Mahali, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me over, guys. Thank you for coming through. We've been having technical issues, but we managed to get into things. Uh, we start for the Let me introduce myself. My name is Mahalia Mulema, mm -hmm. and I am a certified executive coach at Breast Premier. Today, we're just going to, you know, it's a month of women. So we're having a phenomenal woman today, and she is here to share her story with us. Um, without further ado, I'll give her the platform to introduce herself, the work that she does, and we'll get straight into our conversation. Over to you, Mineta. Thank you. Thank you Pleasure. so very much. Uh, happy Women's Month. I know we're halfway through <laughs> the month, but still happy Women's Month. Absolutely. Um, the, first, the first time I heard, apart, apart from International Women's Day, Women's Month was actually in South Africa. But the first time ever I knew where that stemmed from was when Alona sent me mm -hmm. an overview of why this series exists, Women as Legacy yeah. Builders. I had no idea what a rich history. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm Modesta Mahika Bogoni. I am Tanzanian. Um, I am a mother of two, married to a wonderful, most patient man who as soon as he wakes up to how much he's actually taken on may change his mind, but I figure it's too late. His name is Mhando, Mhando Buguni. We currently live in the yep. States. I came here against my will. I'm being held against my will. My husband came for his studies mm. and being mm -hmm. a, a businesswoman, I just said, babe, you, you just, you go, you'll meet me home. I'll even move in with your mother. So, you know, I, you know, I won't, I won't leave. Just do not approve yeah. before. I know um, my background is legal, but at some point I realized by the time things get to the court and it was in its gender, family, children's rights, by the time you get to the court, I think it's too late. There are certain mm -hmm. things that should exist in society and you know, in, in families that I think if the intervention is at that stage, at the individual stage, then you're right. reducing incidences of, you know, having... Uh, you know, the infractions and, 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 and families being split up and, and all kinds of uh, issues that come up in court. So instead I pivoted and it all now sounds like it was intentional. It wasn't, it was situational, it was <laughs> needs-based, but I pivoted to initially human resource development and have <laughs> since transitioned to uh, coaching. Um, and I am in career and business coaching, but what you tend to find in, in my executive coaching as well is most of my clients are women and they're women in transition. So women leaders that are wondering how to balance work and life or uh, looking to aspire for greater, but would like to know that they won't compromise on their responsibilities and their roles. Um, and so our topic today, really looking at how to reclaim your power and, and how to manage transitions as you're a woman and a legacy builder. I think it's, it's a topic a lot of us relate to. It is certainly the why of my going into coaching after all these years of everything else that I've done. So I look forward to engaging. And I pray that we will get to engage uh, more with no, absolutely. the ladies that I hear. Absolutely. I mean, that is such an amazing story. You know, you're talking about transitioning into coaching. How was your transition from, you know, the legal side of um, your career to into coaching? How's that transition um, for you? How's that space? Okay, so my, my transition initially was, and. Let me just be honest. I had to pay uni fees. Okay. Carrying some lawyer's briefcase for a couple of years before, you know, you also do your bar and become a lawyer was just not going to pay the uni debt. That's true. Or so I look for an entry level job that will help me pay my debt. And that mm -hmm. happened to be in human resources. But anyway, I noticed that I got so caught up with my clients as a lawyer that I would leave the law and I could fight you for this woman or her children. <laughs> so then I was like, all right, I'm going to say you need to calm down or you'll yes. be disbarred before you even do the bar. 
And um, then it, to me, it was about how do we build our people's capacity? To, I told you I'm from Tanzania. How do we build our people's capacity to be competitive? How do we so skill um, and, and equip people so that mm. they can be determinants of their own future. Uh, when I have a skill, I can use whatever I have before me, um, you know, to take care of my family. Uh, when I have a skill and I have, uh, you know, I have knowledge and I have resources available and networks, I'm able to better understand some of the uh, contractual relationships, uh, you know, some of some of the the great areas of doing life as family, children, custody, land rights, etc. So it, 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 it pressed on me. And after a while, I realized, honestly, it actually wasn't even a women's issue, just women and youth and women and children. It really, at some point, came to me as an African issue, that just in terms of skills and knowledge and availability of resources, access, um, just as a people, you know, we've been behind. Um, and so for almost 20 years, I've been a practitioner really equipping. And I, I started at, re, at entry level and you know, moved on to leadership. But then I noticed there is a power with working with a leader because they have a sphere of influence that you may never access. Um, there is a power with the, the, spill on, the, the spillover effect of learning and, and developing and growing, you know, when you reach the people at the apex. And so I narrowed it down to really working with leaders. And I know the leaders said would affect more people because I realized we're at a place where we need to get to, maybe I can say a critical, maybe a critical mass might be too much, but you need to have enough of an influence of what you're looking forward to to remove what is, and when a lot of a, a lot of the the displacement, the discrimination, and, and also the being under under skilled is systemic, right? Then you you really need to reach enough for it to to make a a wide change in society. But I cannot reach hundreds and hundreds of millions of African leaders just yet but you can start with leaders and there's such a multiply effect with just them. And so this is how it's transitioned. But on the other side, I'm straddling policy. I'd like to influence policy so that these people you've equipped and they're excited and they're doing things and making a change are actually in an environment that supports that, not an environment that then closes off uh, to really enlighten and equip people to take off. So hence the leadership and executive coaching is a focus, but executive coaching itself was me pushed against the wall saying, okay, you're out here in okay. a foreign country, a mother of toddlers. Nobody knows you, nobody cares. You're just another person in this context. So without your, uh, your performance, without your personal brand that is known and therefore after a while it opened doors, right? Without all of that backing you up, what are you really made of Modesta? And how can you now offer it up as something that you can, you know, to still serve my why, still serve my purpose, but in a different context, in a different way. And I said, well, if, I, if I'm not in management consulting because I don't have access to a corporate world sitting here in this room with these two toddlers in diapers, if, um, <laughs> it was the truth, if I am not getting on any media broadcast, uh, you know, and talking about human capital development, what do I have? Well, I can work with individuals right now whether on the continent or in the diaspora. And that's how I've transitioned and I'm developing more and more in that. So that's how it happened. I asked myself, okay, you feel squeezed. But I often say that the job didn't make me, the business didn't make me. I had the qualifications and this is what I birthed from that. So no matter where you take me, which is why I don't have issues with, let's say competition or somebody would steal my ideas. Well, I just birthed them again, they're in me. Like, well, you can't steal a thing that is part of me. Um, so I just asked myself, I know you don't have the cushioning, right? Of what you had before, mm -hmm. but without that, who are you? And what can you do with what you have right now? And executive mm -hmm. coaching, you know, birth, was birth from that. Mm -hmm. So of all the different things that I could do in consulting and in coaching and in mentorship and training, all of that put together, this is what I could do at the time with these two little girls running around my feet. By the way, the husband mm -hmm. had gone to another country at this point for his second semester. In case you're wondering, like, why is she doing all this with the man? He actually literally left us in a foreign country. 
Long story. Yeah. We're still getting over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let, let's touch on that. I mean, I hear that, you know, the legal side of things has birthed or rather ignited the point that um, through the legal, um, when you're doing the legal work, you want it to be more on the forefront of things and fighting for these women and making sure that they're not just only legally engaged, but rather they are um, protected emotionally and otherwise, you know, I want to find out then from you when you were still in those early stages as a mom and being alone, you know, as married, as a wife, how did you then balance, you know, um, starting your business, your career coaching business and balancing with everything that was happening in your life? Because it sounds like it was a transition that obviously brought a lot of challenges, but how did you find that in having to balance both um, professional and personal? Okay, so I sulked and I acted up for a very long time. Not the most inspiring, like, oh my goodness, you know, mover and shaker. I sulked and I acted up and no. I threatened. <laughs> and I was like, look, my family. And, and you know, they've made sacrifices. I mean, truly, I, you know, my mother is a single mother of five. Sorry so much for the noise where I'm at. Where, where I usually am, this construction, so I thought this would be quieter. <laughs> So, you know, I was like, my mother no, made okay. sacrifices and I made sacrifices and I built a career. What am I doing here? So I solved it. I acted mm -hmm. up for a while. So if you find yourself doing that, it could be part of the process. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, <laughs> after I got over I, after I got over the, the disappointment, um, I realized that I need to be honest that there isn't a normal, as much as it, it seemed nice, I truly believe the best is still yet to come. And I really mm -hmm. have to trust God, that when, when I had the dream for the things I'd like to do over Africa, uh, when, I, when I saw 100 million African leaders equipped and globally competitive and really making a difference in the role that I would play, that still exists, even if the now doesn't point to that in any shape, form, or fashion. Mm -hmm. There are times our current life, our current bank balance, our current situation will tell us nothing you know, it would give no hint that the dream that you hold could ever be true. But I told myself that just because there's a deviation doesn't mean that yeah. the journey isn't worth going to. Like, I'm not gonna change my destination because I show up somewhere there's construction. Like I didn't stop this engagement with you guys because there is actually construction mm -hmm. happening right outside my window. I moved. And then, you know, when they're done with construction, I'll continue doing things there. So that is saying that this is not my reality. This truly is a deviation. You don't change your vision because of transition. You might change your strategy. How then do I approach it? What would I do? Hence me saying, okay, you feel backed up against the wall. Well, then what are you if you don't have all the support system? If you don't have everything else that you had that really, you know, I, there's a time that I was flowing what I was doing, right? I, I was... I was coasting, not coasting negatively, but I was in my element. But with all of that removed, what did I have? Um, and, and also to understand that normal is whatever I make of it. I can create my world and then walk into it. Yeah. So I could either look back to what was or believe that there, you know, the greatest, the best is still yet to come. And it always is. And then start asking, okay, so what do I have in my hands? What can I create now in this context to move towards that? I may, by going through deviation, somehow maybe find this path again and then continue where I was. Or I may just chart out some other path, but I would still get to where I want. So I was determined I will get to where I want to go, even if the in-between looks hazy. And then I said, so what then do you want to do with this? So rather than life is happening to me, which was really my reaction for, for a while. I wish it was like weeks, it was years. I'm like, I don't believe this. I would sign up to this. I'm compromising everything. But when I got over that, I said, I wonder what surprises. I wonder, I wonder what I can create out of this. Everything that happened, I created that. Yeah. You know, so what can I create now? Mm -hmm. and and that actually brought me back to um brought me back more or less to the to the same audience of the same people 
that I'd been speaking with all along, but differently. And I actually believe transitions help us really narrow down to what is core for us to do, both in what is the core focus of my business or my career, what is my core skill set, what is my core uh, goal. But it also narrows you down to what can I do with my energy? I'm one person with 24 hours and only so much energy. What is really a priority for me to do right now? And by, by you know, really wanting to be more efficient, right? And getting greater returns on, on my investment of time, being one person doing all of this. I was able to be even more effective and, and, and get clear, clearer on, on how to serve. And I actually then ended up generating even more revenues than I had before by really getting crystal clear and getting lean. So it's been a blessing in disguise. I wouldn't have chosen it. I probably wouldn't choose it again if I had the option, but I'm so grateful that I've been through this. Bye. <laughs> I mean, that is such an amazing story and I can hear the passion and especially more so with the resilience, having the ability to overcome the challenges you encountered. And like you said, that you had to question yourself, what is your purpose? And that alone, that drove you to being able to adapt with the challenges rather than sitting down and feeling like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Um, what am I going to do? You know, like you mentioned that like you were new in the area and obviously you didn't know the structure, whatever what was happening, but you had to be creative mm -hmm. and more so being a coach has those adaptability skills, you know. Um, you mentioned energy and I like that because energy is one thing that is important and drives us, you know what I mean? Okay. If you can just maybe tell us, how do you preserve your energy in the work that oh. you do how do you that you are centered more so? Get me started. So, <laughs> what I have learned, honestly, is I need to know, so first of all, right, my purpose, why am I here on earth? I believe God put me here and it's for a very specific assignment. Um, and my territory is at minimum the continent of Africa. It's not even just my country. And I'm aware of that. And one of the things that I came to learn um, through this transition is I am Modesta. But I also steward a purpose called Modesta. I'm a person here, we're talking, right? Mahalia, we're talking. But this person came here to fulfill a specific purpose, right? I must steward her well. That purpose must be stewarded well. I cannot treat myself any which way. Yeah. So now I start, it's, it's as if I have a child or whatever somebody uh, really treasures, values, and has entrusted me with. And I knew that for Modesta, I know I was, I was speaking the third person, guys, work, you know, work with me with this. Uh, for Modesta <laughs> okay. to be effective, right? To get to where she needs to go, then I have to steward her well. Nobody else is going to be as um, invested in this vision or is going to hold this purpose as dear as I could. I, I understand best. So then, you know, I, I set my prioritized values. What are my non-negotiables? And, you know, and, and, I, and I have, you know, five, and I think we all, we should really stick to not more than five. Like, these are the real core, core, core deal breakers. You touch this, right? It's, it, it's off. Um, and then I, I've learned really to, like I was saying, manage your energy, manage your time. What is a priority for me to do? What is the most um, effective way of reaching whatever goal that I've set myself there's so many in-betweens and there's so many nice to do's but what is key for me to do and one thing that I learned about managing my energy it isn't even just about what I'm doing right now shouldn't deplete me it's not in the doing it's really just in the being because if I get out of for instance a toxic conversation or exchange that would take me hours to get over so it's not what have I scheduled now <laughs> It's what I could have scheduled five hours ago that is still running in my head right now, right? So that is important for me. So then now it wasn't just manage your energy because you have 24 hours and you're a mother and you're a wife and you've got these other responsibilities. No, it was just the fact that how do we keep you sane <laughs> and, and, and also being able to deliver 
Um, and so I am mindful, honestly, of what I watch, what I hear. I'm mindful of the kind of relationships, the kind of conversations. Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, I'm mindful of the kind of conversations and you know, and and and, and, um, and relationships. I'm, I'm mindful of the of my pastimes, how much rest I get, even to how much time alone that I get, whether it's to pray or I'm thinking or I'm just stilling myself sometimes to just hear from God. Um, so that's been very important. But something else that I learned the hard way through business was putting in systems. So I, I would say, you know, get a support system in people. My husband is extremely supportive. So he knows my appointments, um, when I need time, et cetera. I mean, as I am for him, but that is key. So I communicate my needs and I seek help both at home and professionally. Like I shamelessly will ask for help because I realize that's, that's the only way, you know, that I, I will be utilized. Um, but then also creating systems brings a certain predictability and a flow so whether it is templates so that I don't answer afresh each time somebody makes a query there are templates I can just go out or it's auto responses on email and I say that you know I'll be available 24 hours so that I don't think oh my goodness 17 emails came in and I haven't answered anybody what are they going to think of me and my, you know mm. so that helps creating templates creating systems automating a lot of things if I get frequently asked questions, I should already see that there's a pattern. So I will make the time to invest to create the solution. But then after that is plug and play. And that is really helpful. But the other thing that is, that is really important um, in really managing energy is keeping my word. Whether it's to myself yeah. or to others. So when I ask my daughters who are now six and seven, when I ask them for time and I tell them the time and they can read the time, that I won't be available and I'll be doing this, but I'm come out at this time. I come out at that time and everything drops and I'm on them. And we just do whatever it is that we need to do. And that also then, because like I said before, managing energy isn't just in the present, but it's, it's in all the, the self-talk and all the voices telling you of how you're not, you're not managing, you're not doing. And so to do that is I, my word needs to be my word. If I cannot keep my word, I need to send another word that will yeah. say, I said this that's not going to be possible yeah. i can only do it to this extent or we'll do it later and that way that peace within then comes out and orders things without but the energy mm -hmm. isn't isn't just eating well resting well and how i'm being effective at a thing is i think it starts mentally for me to to um really choose my world and as much as i can live in that world and have integrity in self um, you know, to, to, main, to maintain that. I truly believe that you can treat people how to esteem and how to treat you, but they're not gonna treat you. You cannot say one thing and live a certain, uh, differently. Yeah. So yeah. many times when we talk about managing energy, it, it, we make it sound as if how we react to people. You know, yeah. knowing how to say no, knowing the boundaries, and even boundaries is not for other people, it's for you. So if I am clear about who I am and where I'm going, and I have now decided the path that I'm taking there, and I can be at peace with that, that it wasn't as it was, but this is the path I'm taking now, and I'm giving my all to this path. And I give myself permission to change my mind about this path and evolve into something else should I need to. You know, just have that peace, I've chosen this. So I'm going to invest all I have in this. And at some point in the future, if another way is better serving, then I will take that. And to keep word to myself and to those around me and to live my values in a way that people actually realize what I say is what I do and, and vice versa, then other people also find their, their place you know, in that that I've created for myself, but then not to be selfish, to also give the same to others in the relationships yeah. that I've decided to do life with, to be that support for others as well. That is so profound. I love when you say that we often think that boundaries are for other people, but more so it's for us and making sure that we are mindful of our own space and our own community so that we can be able to operate 
effectively, not only in our careers, but also in our family and friendship life, you know, um, making sure that we are good. Um, I want to find out from you then, how do you use your story, your journey, especially more so being a mom, being a wife, getting into Tanzania, um, all the transitioning, how do you use that, your story into your coaching? Um, how do you make sure that it resonates with you? with your clients? How do you resonate um, using your story with your clients in your coaching business? Thank you so much for that question. Um, given the fact that my, my story, my background, my struggles really were, you know, like the, the inspiration for this. Um, what, I've, what I've come to learn is every second that you have Mm -hmm. Every new second that you get is an opportunity for a new, you know, for, for a new beginning. Like every single mm -hmm. second, no matter what's mm -hmm. happened, you can always turn things around. Mm -hmm. I remember I, I had gone through just such a crazy time at university, uh, you know, much 20 years ago. And I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass at all. And I really wanted to because I wanted to take care of my younger brother and I. Okay, you know, I just went through a lot to avoid clinical depression and I was I'm taking time out. And so I didn't even want to look at my results. My friend went to look for me and I sat down on the curb of this road and I just said, I'm invincible. Like my eyes were glazed over. I'm like, I'm invincible. I'm in like there was no way going through all of that, you could come out. Mm -hmm. And like, okay, I'm going to second class, I have a degree, but still to me, that was like, what? Like I was supposed to fail completely. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense to me. So what I've, I've come to learn, which is something as I often tell people, look, this is not my first rodeo and this isn't yours either. There's so many things you've already overcome, no matter what challenge comes. I mean, we really need to just look back and say, oh, oh I know you. I've seen you before. All right, welcome. Okay, you want to do this? You know, like there isn't a transition that we haven't um, been through before. So I, I, I ask them how willing they are to get to the other side once you know the paint at the other side. Mm -hmm. It's not whether you will, you will if you want to. It's 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 your willingness to there is absolutely nothing that we cannot achieve, mm -hmm. not a single thing. And when I realized this, mm -hmm. it was it was so free, but at the same time, it really tasks you because now you know you're responsible for whatever outcomes in life, absolutely whatever outcomes. You know, it's up to you. And when people start thinking, could somebody like me, I mean, I've heard your story, but you are you and you have, I'm like, no, not really. And many a times when, when I share, Malia, I share quite raw, like you might be put off like, so much for being a coach, like you're going through half the stuff we're going through. <laughs> Who's paying you, right? <laughs> but I need to be real because you need to understand that a person can be a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. that 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 um, you can be scared and still attempt something. You can risk greatly and 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 still, um, you know, still be shaking in your boots. So I often say, challenge yourself to grow, but give yourself the grace as you're, you know, as you're as you're going. Through. Just one second. Okay. It's okay, you can hear loud noises because it's all, they just keep into the business. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's a lot happening today. So honestly, um, you know, I, I, I share this to say, you do have it. You are the person, you can do this. And the question often is, can somebody like me really? And I say, the question really is, what would it take? Not even what does it take for other people, because we all come in different contexts. What would it take for me, right. the reality of my life and the demands of my work and my family and for my skill sets? Because some a lot of people will say, but if I don't have the certifications, I don't have the skill sets or yeah. the budget or the whatever. So not what does it take, because you might look at what other people have done and what it took for them. It's really, what would it take? Just entertain the question, what would it take? and let's walk through it, if you're willing though. Because if you're not willing, no matter what cart was, whatever I do with you as a coach, well, you won't get, you're not willing. And I've noticed, and, and I can go back to this as a people, no matter the training, uh, no matter the motivation, 
if you do not see yourself as a person that can succeed, you actually won't. You could have gone and gotten the degrees and be certified and licensed. You could even get the investment into your business. You know, somebody believes in you, you got a loan or whatever. You could get everything, all dozen or everything lined up and still not because something, somewhere, somewhere told you, somebody like me, no, somebody like me can. But when we can get past that, where you can embrace that, yes, somebody like me can. And what would it take for me with my particular set of circumstances? Then the world opens up. And that's what, you know, I've asked myself. And that's what I invite many a times, you know, people mm -hmm. to journey through. What would, what would it take, actually? If another <laughs> human being can do it, what would it take for me in my circumstances? Mm -hmm. yeah. That is so inspiring. I mean, it's so important how the feedback that you give and as how we view ourselves. Like you mentioned that no matter how much qualifications we may have, if we don't believe in ourselves, um, you, you know, you're not going to be able to drive the vehicle, no matter if someone's going to push the car or whatever the case may be. But it's important that, you know, there's a sense of willingness to overcome whatever situations you may be experiencing so that you can be able to drive your car or your journey moving forward. So I like that. It's so, so inspiring. Um, talking about that, I want to find out from you, how do you then, when you, for example, experiencing those moments or those days where you feel depleted, you feel stressed, you feel anxious, uh, not motivated, how do you then get up? Um, what gets you up? What is that one thing that you do to make sure that, that you continue the day, whether it's personal or professional? How do you, how do you sustain that? Thank you, Harley. That's a good one. Honestly, mm -hmm. so the first thing is I send the alert out to the fam. <laughs> <laughs> like I will be needing space today. Yeah. So let me just start. I would say to my kids, mommy's not here. They're like, but you are. I'm like, no, I am not. <laughs> like, but we can see you. I'm like, but I'm not here. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, taking, like I'm taking some, I'm taking time. And I, you know, I assure them, it doesn't mean I don't love you. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. Just mommy needs space mm -hmm. for you. And one of the other things I do, honestly, to me, is spiritual. So I say, I say, Holy Spirit, let's go. So what I mean is, <laughs> like, I'm like, Holy Spirit, let's go. So I, I see myself getting out of, honestly, out of the earth, right? No crazy spiritual mumbo jumbo. Just I see myself getting out yeah. so that I don't see the details of my of my day to day. So I want to zoom out for um if I actually say, God, can we just get out of the details? Because then I, I can get bogged down in it. You have a greater plan and a purpose. And if I am in this right now, if I am in the weeds with it, I, I will lose focus. So I get out and I worship. And, and, I, and I say, you know, I, I ask him to help me with the calm, but also to tell me what he's really for. If I feel like there's so many strands and everything is wrapped up in this, in this ball, what is really core? Um, so I must, um, you know, there's a scripture of uh, King David saying, David encouraged himself in, in the Lord. I yeah. have to, because <laughs> purpose is for a lifetime, Ali. It's not a now <laughs> Right? It's not just a, it's not a transition, just a, a switch jobs or you know, I'm doing this in a business and I'm taking it. It's really looking back at the end of your life and seeing this tapestry that's woven of who you were and why you came and what you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, how the world is better because you existed. So you, this is a marathon and you need to last. You need to be in this for the long haul. So when I get caught up in the details, I know yeah. I need to get out of that. And not just get out of that to strategize. And I do a lot of that too. I'm all about that. Yeah. But really, I hand it back to God who gave it to me in the first place. I didn't ask. I mean, I, I couldn't be passionate about anything else. And right. I still myself. And I truly, at times, don't do anything until I feel that, you know, the mental yeah. or whatever emotional turmoil has stilled. And I, and I ask, you know, I, I really must know what got me there. Because it's our thoughts, right? They spiral into... Thoughts that become the yeah. you know, patterns of things, and then, and then emotions follow them. So I mm. ask, so what's this about? What am I anxious about? Mm. Like what triggered this? I need to get to that. What mm. triggered this? And then I'll say, I'll speak, and I, I actually speak scripture to myself. I'll tell myself mm. both scripture and an affirmation. I've recorded myself speaking who I am. 
So I will listen to that and I will speak back to that recording. Yeah. Reminding myself who I am, why I'm here and where I'm going and how I'm, you know, the, the role I play both in my family and on the continent. And then, um, and then now I say, so what's before me to do? And what is the one thing that, you know, that I really need to do for now? And I will choose that one. But should I get to a place where I don't even, like I've noticed I've checked out, I am going to take a day off. I will have to yeah. come back and deliver. I'm going to take a day off and I will communicate with whoever I need to, let you know whatever hasn't been done. But of course, this is the exception. This is like the norm. This is my life. But I think it's necessary. Yeah. So when there's so much oh. trauma, it's strong. Zoom out. What's going on? You know, address that thing. And then what can you do now? All right, let's get on that, that one thing that will make the, the, the most difference. And because I've challenged myself to be a person that delivers and is actually ahead of, you know, whether it's clients, whatever it is I need to do, this will be the exception. And when you communicate, you find people give you the grace. People who lot more understanding than, than you realize sometimes. So I allow myself to be human in every context of my life. Mm. Completely, I show up human I show up goofy I whatever I will show up stern if something needs to but I am all me everywhere and I am a human being and Correct. it's it's key sometimes especially as women and women leaders to allow mm -hmm. that to be seen yet I will show up and show out I will deliver thank you very much but I'll also say I need a break I'm going to take my heels off and and and, and I need some time mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to go for ice cream see that <laughs> Yes. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Um, I'm hearing that, you know, you have such an amazing self-awareness and it's so important because sometimes it's easy for us to lose ourselves as more especially in the roles that we play. And I love the relationship you have with your kids so that you can be able to tell them that mommy right now needs a break. But I'm also hearing that, you know, the sense of you reflect on what you're feeling, what you're experiencing. And when you've identified that, you then have the ability to release it in mm -hmm. any form or way to make sure that you are okay and you have the ability to produce the results that you would like to see at the end of the day. With my follow-up question to that is, I mean, I can hear that you have such a great sense of self-awareness when with yourself, a great relationship. What, who is your pillar of strength or where do you get your sense of support? Um, to know that sometimes, yes, I'm experiencing A, B, and C, but sometimes it's great to have also a, a great network um, or a support system that will be able to help you navigate your life. Who would you say the pillar of strength? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is such a good question. Thank you so much for posing it. I have gotten to a point of categorizing the kind of support that I need. <laughs> And asking myself, who do I have by name? Not just generally, yeah, yeah my family. Mm. Who by name? Mm -hmm. What specifically are they doing? <laughs> equipped to be a support. Mm -hmm. And what's it for them? Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Because there's a time I, I, I came to this. One of, you know, my, my husband is one of my greatest supports. Um, yeah. Uh, no, because he's married to me, and he has to. Because you understand, just being married doesn't mean that somebody else <laughs> support you. You could be married, and they do not. But there is a time I assumed that it was a business-related support that I needed, and I assumed he was helping with that. And I think I kind of just assumed during my corner, because you're my husband, like, like you're going to be the one doing this. And I just made that assumption, right? Um, mm. And and so I came to you know. I know, okay, so in terms of spirit, you know, I know people say, I have a relationship with God, which we do, you know, who, who, who do I stand with spiritually? Um, I actually have a spiritual yeah. coach, you know, working with me and she, she's one of my mentors now. You know, who is my mentor? I have mentors for different aspects of my life. Uh, who, who is my, we're gonna pray this through type of sister, you know, we've got that. Um, I'm part of like this women, yes. women in management um, in Tanzania. Now that, that may not be a, an emotional support, but that's a professional networking, you know, support mm -hmm. um, for the, somehow the Lord has given me friends I've had since, since childhood, I will still have individuals from, from, from a group, you know, one or two people, um, and, and those remain support. But I do also um, 
I, I, am, I am conscious. So if it's friends, who are my friends that I can do life with? And I surround myself with people who will challenge me. Mm -hmm. um, so if I, if I, when I was having a fit, for instance, as a wife, I'm not going to look for someone to be like, child, leave, 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 leave. You know, <laughs> like you're compromising your career. Your future. <laughs> I don't want somebody to tell me to leave my husband. Okay. I want somebody to say, look, just get off for yourself. This is life. This is marriage. This is a sacrifice. How can you make it work? Um, and so I, I actually, you know, have uh, individuals or groups of individuals, but I mostly will have individual type relationships. And I know who's my yeah. go-to for, for which area. And I also paid for the same way. They're individuals that I, that I stand for. Because for everything that I have, I ask myself, who are you like that for? For whom do you stand? You know, in that capacity. Um, I have, for instance, to, 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 tomorrow, I have my monthly mentorship for women leaders. So I have that, mm. or I have individuals, yeah. um, I'm a coach for somebody else, a sister for somebody else. That's really key. Yeah. But I haven't just kind mm. of, I don't wonder and I don't generalize. I literally know of individuals and names and why they're the ones who stand with me, you know, mm. in, in, certain, in certain areas. Like who would I trust on short notice to take my kids to, <laughs> being that they're little girls right. and they're all kinds yeah. of evils of leaving little Absolutely. girls alone. You know, mm -hmm. so in every area, I don't leave it to chance and I never make assumptions. And mm -hmm. I endeavor never to let it be one way. It's key for us to be conscious and actually develop a, our support system and nurture it too. That's so important. That's okay. I love that you mentioned, you know, you have a lot of mentorship for different things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, more so surrounded by women and so forth. What would you say or... Um, you know, how important is it having a coach, more so in the career space or personally? How would you say that, what would you say in terms of um, mentorship? How is it important um, for us to be able to navigate our lives better, having that sense of support? Oh, it's, it's, it's invaluable. You, you cannot um, quantify the returns on that. Mm -hmm. So first of all, just understanding that we're probably speaking to leaders, you and I at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. And by virtue of being in leadership position is yeah. you stood out, you have the capabilities. Okay. And so you're the go-to resource person. Yes. Which means you uh, may not see blind spots or mm -hmm. um, you, you're never even given the room to just be and evaluate whether am I doing it well? Do I need support? Um, I call it telling on yourself to somebody else. I like telling on myself to somebody else. Like I hand myself in, I'm like, Look. you know, I need help in this area and I may need help even far reaching than I realize, you know, walk with me. And I am ready yeah. to pay, you know, to, to get that support mm -hmm. as well. I think it's, it's, it's really key. You know what you know. You don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. As far yeah. as you can go in an area, You've gone. If you could go on your own, you would go. If there is a higher yes. level to aspire for, a higher dimension to climb up to, you need somebody that is at that level or higher to get you there. Mm -hmm. I've noticed, mm -hmm. I mean, guys, I'm all for free webinars. Like, I'm like, hey, I show up on people's <laughs> webinars. I am like, somebody is like, download my free ebook. I know they just want my email address. I know I can, I'm subscribed later. I will get you, download your ebook. There's only so much learning you can do on your own. Uh, there are times it's a question of paradigm shift. There are times it's a question of, um, and especially when you come in community, you are a product of you know, the, the people that you most spend time with, which means you will tend to think alike. You cannot get out of that orbit of you know, circling yeah. around the same things unless something will come and just absolutely catapults you out. And, and it is, it is important to have, and not, not, as, not as a crutch, but it is important when you are aspiring for anything in life to have somebody alongside you that will help you overcome you know, your limitations and that can help you look mm -hmm. at your circumstances different from yeah. what you and all those, your buddies, your friends, your family, you know, see them to be. Um, and, and I realize the modest I am today is not the modest I need to be to fulfill that mission of equipping 100 million African leaders. 
there is this lady, um, Dr. Obiagele Ezekwesili. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. I could have butchered that name also many ways. She's Nigerian. Uh, she used to do yeah. the medicine education and the natural resources and she was the head of Africa for the World Bank group and and you know, she was head of I think Transparency International at some point and she is the picture of a woman leader that I you know that I aspire for. Okay. And, and so if I'm looking at OB like Dr. OB, I realize there's there's much growth still but I'm not going to get there by passage of time. <laughs> I'm not gonna get there even just by me learning something new. I would need coaching. Mentorship is beautiful, but I've also, one of my mentors told me, actually he's Nigerian too. One of my mentors told me, Modessa, some mentors, you can access their books, you can access conferences. You won't get to meet every mentor, but get as much as you can from them. Cause you know, I got disappointed. Uh, there's a mentor that I really wanted to, who agreed to work with me, but he passed away two weeks later. Um, and, but a coach, <laughs> thank you. I mean, he's global, he's Dr. Miles Monroe. So it's not like the, he's global, but you know, I got really excited that he, him being a leadership guru and a management guru would have wanted to support me. Um, but a coach will then help you with that roadmap and walk alongside you as you <laughs> cross yeah. those, you know, so whether it's, it's the levels that you're at or it's, it's, it's habits or it's, it's, it's strategy. And yes. what you would accomplish incrementally moving at your own mm -hmm. pace, you know, and your own growth you could have that exponentially through coaching. Yeah. I think coaching without exaggeration is the single most effective leadership growth um, intervention. Absolutely. And lasting. And once a mind is stretched and, and, and new paradigms are, are received, that not only benefits them, it benefits everybody else that works with that person. There is no equivalent yeah. to coaching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that you mentioned that coaching is one of the greatest um, interventions, you know, especially when an individual is looking um, just to fulfill their goals or even anything, matter of fact, you know, it's so important for an individual to have someone they can walk their journey with. And you mentioned that you touched on that mentorship or coach and having these interventions, um, as part of your tools, you know, as you know that, you know, in South Africa it is Women's Month and the purpose of this is just to be able to inspire women. And I myself have been inspired by your story and um, I've enjoyed chatting to you. I've learned so much from you. Um, you know, as we're about to, to just wrap up the episode, I want you maybe just to share some tips or techniques to women out there. You know, how can they just continue embracing themselves, who they are in their personal and professional lives? Um, how can they don't forget their power. You know, sometimes obviously we celebrate women because it's Women's Month or it's their birthday or it's, you know, um, Mother's Day. But what um, advice or guidance would you tell women to, to remind themselves of their power? Thank you. So the first thing really is uh, until it is clear to you you know, why you're here and what you're here for, you might find that you defer to the loudest voice of the most mm -hmm. inspirational agenda around you. Mm -hmm. So you could get caught up in something good, but it's not necessarily yours, simply because that seemed really compelling. I would urge people not to get scared of being quiet by themselves. Be quiet by yourself and ask yeah. yourself, who am I and why am I here? And I mean, nothing crazy to sit there and listen out to a voice, but you know, you've got clues of who you are and, and, and why you're here from the things that either anger you, that you're thinking, God, if I were in a position of power, this is something I would have to address. Like not another person, either you've been through it, other people have, you're like, nobody else will go through this, you know, on my watch. Absolutely. Or it's something that you're so positively impassioned by. You don't notice time go by. You don't, mm. like you could get in a conversation in this area or in this pursuit. You could spend hours in this pursuit. Okay. That kind of gives you a hint of the things that, that you enjoy. Mm -hmm. And I ask you, please don't edit 
your thoughts with, yeah, but where will I find the time for that? But we don't even have the budget for that. Like if I said that to my husband, they would just don't, just allow yourself. It's free. Honestly, dreaming is free. Nobody's going to come and invoice Absolutely. you. It's free. So just dream. Yeah. Yeah. And then start non-negotiable values. There's nothing like it. And that's basically the principles, the standards in which you want to govern yourself, conduct yourself, that you promise to conduct others, you know, you, yourself by others, and that you expect others to conduct themselves by you. Once mm-hmm. you've, you, you've set these five, and of course, I have a whole exercise for that, but once you've set <laughs> these five, right, non-negotiable yeah. values, look at your 24 hours and ask yourself how much of what I'm doing even aligns with my values. Yeah. You might find yourself in things that you could just tolerate or even absolutely dislike, but you think about it brings in the money, but it's the respectable thing to do. And I want to say this to you, and it sounds a little far-fetched at times. Do you know you can yeah. make money out of absolutely anything you choose to? Mm-hmm. And I don't mean a little, I mean a lot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of money, even in times of COVID. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> seeing opportunity in a crisis. Absolutely. So ask yourself first what it is that you do want to do. Yeah. And that you do at this point. I, I don't know who has the time to waste, whether you're in your teens, 20s, 30s. Nobody really has time to experiment through life. So yeah. just you know, ask yourself what it is that, that you're interested in doing. And then... Mm. Just, just entertain yourself for a little bit and ask, what would it take? Mm. And after our feed, even today, just start scribbling down. Okay, if I were to pursue this, if I truly went for my heart, if I truly went for, I'm in my element. I mean, life's challenges will come anyway, but you know, you wake up every day, I'm going to live out the thing that I enjoy today. Right. If I were to ask myself, what would it take to actually do this, still have time for my family and make a whole lot more money? Mm-hmm. Then just start brainstorming, just write yeah. down whatever mind and then pursue that one thing that seems within reach and i would ask this get an accountability get a crazy friend an accountability partner or a crazy colleague who'd be like yes girl yes you can um we, we, <laughs> defer, we yeah. defer our dreams we defer aspirations i have spoken myself out of many things and i think a lot of women do that too don't do that today yeah. just read strong what would it take for me not what does it take for other but what would it take for me to make that reality. I have a friend who once gave, gave me an offer of a huge farm. Somebody was selling their farm, huge farm. I'm like, first of all, I'm in the city. Mm-hmm. You're good. First That's of all, I'm in, city. <laughs> yeah. I'm in a city, right? What do I want this farm for? But then again, he mentioned who owned the farm and he mentioned how large it was and I freaked out. I'm like, yeah. look, I don't have that kind of money to be spending on farms. <laughs> He said, Modesta, I need you to learn something. Never forget this. It's not the price. It's the terms of sale. What if I told you, you pay one rand a day for this farm, but you you have have it up front. You'd be like, a rand, like just a rand. Of course you do a rand a day, right? And so I've I've now learned to just ask, what would it take? Because it's, it's not it's not what you think. Even if something comes at this cost, you still ask yourself, what would it take? You might. I yeah. just recently found somebody who was ready to invest in what we're doing, and I was going to have a conversation with this person um, to find out who they know who could partner in it. And they're just like, yeah. I believe I've been watching for twenty five years. So here. Mm-hmm. Simply because I said this thing, you know, I want to take it bigger, take it online, reach more people. What would it take? My budget was not reflecting what it would take. My time was not reflecting. My expertise, certainly not building an online business. But just that one question got us a funder and is getting us you know, something built and, and getting us partnerships. So this is what I would say, ladies. We often defer our dreams. We don't even dare even ask, who am I? What do I want? You think, yeah. oh, what does it matter what I want? It matters what you want. And it's not to say you're going to be selfish and put your family aside. The greatest service you can do to your family is for you to be centered, is for you to know who you are and where you're going, and for you to live that thing out. I, my mouth felt, you know, open when I reflected on the fact that just because I'm a wife and, ch- and, and, and mother doesn't mean God is going to um, absolve me from fulfilling my purpose on the earth. I had a purpose before I became a wife and mother, and Are it's you? going to be like, okay, what'd you do? With your time on the earth, he's still gonna ask me. I'm yes. like, what? 
didn't you see how busy it got? Like right about 30 something? No, he doesn't care. I mean, he cares, but you know what I mean? So then what would it look like? I was just trying to listen to this. <laughs> I was listening to Rachel Holly. She has this book, Girl, Stop Apologizing. It's basically saying, what would it look like for me in my context? Not like her, not her family, not them with the money, not them with all the time, not them with 57 maids in the house. No, no, no. Me and my life where I'm doing everything and I'm going to work and I'm taking care of my family, me in my context. What would it take? And you would be surprised what that one question will do for you. Don't defer any longer. Find out what impassions you. Choose the principles on which you live, including wealth. If wealth is a principle for you, make sure that you're not, you know, shortchanging yourself by asking for less than your worth. And then just ask what would it take and follow that and you'd be surprised what you can see. There are things that we think we'll do when the kids are 18 later. You can do this year, 2020, from August 1. Question, what would it take for me and my kind of reality will open up the world Whoops. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Wow. It has been such an amazing hour with you. Um, I mean, I've learned the importance of finding your purpose, being able to then use that to your advantage and value, you know, and not shy away from your dreams and not defer. Like you said, you know, it's important as women that we not only try to reach the physical of the person to mentor us, but like you mentioned we can read. We can read books. Sorry about that. We can read books. We can um, just be able to, you know, read, watch videos, seminar, webinars, and so forth. And the the the, the lockdown or the pandemic has taught us to start now, you know, um, not to just generally wait for tomorrow, um, tomorrow this and that. But it's been it's a matter of starting now and the importance of seeing your value within any uh, space that you're in and using the, mm -hmm. the little resources that you have. Um, before we let you go, you know, where can people find you? Um, how can people reach you? If maybe they want to talk to you, people watching at home. Sure. Yes. My email is modesta at modesta.africa, M-O-D-E-S-T-A. Mm -hmm. And my website is modesta.africa. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm just okay. like a little vain woman, but it's as simple as that. Modesta dot Africa, Modesta and Modesta yeah. dot Africa, and that's how you can Easy. reach me. And, and the same reach. on YouTube and LinkedIn, Twitter, LinkedIn. Instagram, Facebook yeah. as well on all yeah. different platforms. So a lot of what I'm sharing, you can get that on YouTube as well on Modesta dot Africa. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank giving you. us your time. Thank you, Thank Thank you for you. sharing your story. Thank you for being vulnerable with us, you know, which is important. Um, we have been inspired. We thank you so much and continue doing an amazing work. Um, and we'll look at the different platforms that you've mentioned, look at your work. And yeah, until next time, hopefully we'll have another woman's session and we will invite you and we'll take it from there. Thank you so much. This has been wonderful. I thank, thank you. Thank you, Alona. Thank Dionysia. Did I click like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. And all the wonderful yeah. women that have, that have joined us today. Thank Absolutely. you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for you guys at home watching. Uh, my name is Mahalia Mlema and I am from Biz Premier. See you next time um, as we continue to inspire more women as it is Women's Month. So yes, good night. Bye.